YouTube. In today's video, we're upgrading the video card in the Mac Pro. As you can see, I've already installed the new video card in question. This is the old one. This is the HD5870. Now, this is an official Mac card. That's just a regular PC card. And the reason I switched this out is because I want to try how macOS Mojave and the Catalina run on here. And for that, you need a beefy graphics card. And I also want to see if you can get some better performance out of this machine uh, by fitting a faster video card to see if uh, we can alleviate the CPU uh, bottleneck a little bit. Well, let me rephrase that to uh, confirm or deny that most of the games that we've tested in the gaming video on the Mac Pro 3,1 that the CPU is the limiting factor in every case. And if it isn't yet, how much will it actually take for it to become a bottleneck? I think this card fits the build just fine. This is an XFX RX 570 8 gigabyte video card. Picked it up on Amazon, it was on clearance for a little bit. And uh, I also ordered a little bit of a RAM kit for my main computer so I could upgrade from my DDR4 3000 CL15 that would not go any higher at all. And be a little bit uh, wonky sometimes to a 3600 kit that uh, I've set to better timings, but I digress, that's all beside the point. We're here to talk about this video card. Now, one other problem that most video cards have these days is that they come with an 8-pin uh, connector for power. The Mac Pro does not have an 8-pin connector. There's where this one comes in. I noticed on the packaging information for this particular card, the XFX XXX whatever edition, I forget the exact name, but they're always ridiculous on gaming products, and I don't really care too much for it. That it came with this adapter, with the dual 6-pin to a single 8-pin. That is exactly what the doctor ordered. So what we need to do now is connect up the adapter. Uh, the other way. And put it in the card. Now I've also read that most of these RX 570 and some RX 580 cards even will work fine sometimes on a single 6-pin on the newer Mac Pro 4.1 for instance but uh, I don't want to leave it the chance to figure that one out I prefer to do it somewhat properly and this should be uh, the route to take it's not a particularly power hungry car D570 but uh, I think we'll be fine this way now, I think that's enough chit chat Let's actually turn the system on. I have prepared it with macOS Mojave already, and it should boot into it automatically so we can see if this actually works on our macOS. It should, but I've also tried a GTX 1050 Ti that wouldn't even <laughs> display under Windows, so I'm not getting my hopes up that much, to be fair. And uh, I know that 1050 Ti works for sure because I took that out of my server and it, would, it always did fine in there, so. And it works fine on the PC, but uh, yeah. Lids on, let's set it up and uh, turn it on for the magic moment. Okay, it is time to turn it on. We're also going to witness one of the downsides of not using an official Mac EFI video card. And that means no boot screen. So we cannot use the boot picker, we cannot get into recovery. For all of those different things, you will need a proper Mac video card. Now, I have two, <laughs> I have the 5870, and I still have the original 8800 GT for this, so it shouldn't be a problem. And uh, if I did everything right, it should not complain about the drives either, because, well, this Mojave install is on an SSD that's on a PCI Express card, and if it's even slightly wonky, it will never display anything. But we should be good to go once uh, Mojave starts loading. And we have display. Excellent. Well, let me log in. Here we are, Mojave. We don't have a frosted looking dock, so that means we have graphics separation. Apparently there's something wrong with the night shift patch. Obviously we're using the DOS Dude 1 patcher to get Mojave running at all on a 3.1 because it is, of course, unsupported. We will not reboot. 
No. We don't have time for that. I want to keep this a somewhat short video. Yeah, that always pans out, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah. Let me zoom in so you can see what is going on here. As we can see, we have a Radeon RX 570 8GB video card in our Mac Pro early 2008. So that would appear to work just fine. And that's the way we like to see it. It should also mean that the uh, CPU will run at a lower speed and that we won't get as much fan noise as a result of, of that because the system could get pretty loud under High Sierra on the 50 at 70 because that was also not really 100% supported on that release but it worked okay but yeah as we're sitting here we're looking at about 7% CPU usage uh, well, that's not too bad for a 12 year old computer on the almost latest OS. Now, the reason I picked Mojave and not Catalina is basically because I do want this machine to uh, retain the older app support. If I wanted really old app support, for instance, PowerPC applications or whatever, I could always just swap the video card back to the 5870 that will work under Snow Leopard and newer and run Rosetta and PowerPC apps there, but I don't really see the need personally to run PowerPC apps that much. Because most of the things that I do on the Mac will run on the latest releases and they're all Intel binaries anyway, so we'll be fine in that regard. So, uh, yeah. What we could do, that's just something I want to check real quick, is whether the graphics card is working correctly. And I need to download Geekbench for that because this is a completely clean install of Mojave. Uh, Geekbench 5, I think, is the latest for Mac OS. Of course, 10.13.5 or later. Well, we have that. We have 10.14.6. Then when we're Core 2 Duo, well, we have two Core 2 Quad, basically, Xeons in here. It's still a very potent little system. Well, it's not little, and it doesn't actually sip power. It drinks it by the boat load. That's all part of the fun, isn't it? Let's agree to that. Later, whatever. I don't care. Okay. Let's see. OpenCL or Metal Benchmark. Well, let's do OpenCL first. Okay, we'll just let that run. Get some numbers, then we can later compare them and see if they're in line with other RX 570s out there. And we'll also get a uh, feel for the fan noise on the card when we're loading it up a little bit. Okay, our results are in. We have a metal score of 34,505. An score of 37,133. Okay. So I guess what we should do, let's open up the benchmark charts and see what gets close. Let's see, the Radeon Pro 4, let's see, this is what, this is the metal benchmark. So we got 34,505, that would put us around the Radeon Pro 5500X, Radeon RX 5500XT, 575X, 480X, somewhere around there. Let me zoom in if you can't really see the scores that well. So we're somewhere around this mark here, around the uh, 575X, 480X area. So that's pretty good. 5500XT, that area. And OpenCL. Again, we got 37,133. Let's see where that is. Yeah, basically bang on what we would expect. 
somewhere around here. ARCs 570s here, 470, 580X, Radeon Pro. It's around that mark. Quadro T2000, whatever that is. And uh, yeah, basically a rounded GTX Titan X, apparently. But yeah, basically bang on what a 570 should should be doing. So that's pretty good. So it's performing in line in terms of what the GPU is doing. So the PCI Express 2.0 bus is definitely not bottlenecking this card at all. It's really bang on what it should be doing. So uh, I guess that really paves the way for us to go ahead and uh, start testing uh, games on the Windows side as well. I'll need some more prep work for that video for sure because I need to uh, get it set up in Windows and verify that it's working there as well. Run some of the benchmarks, get some comparisons done. So that's definitely something for another video. I'm going to keep this one a little bit shorter than, than usual. I hope you enjoyed this video nevertheless. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.